Alright guys, we're all Ross Lair and this is part two of my wrestling DVD collection. We're going to be on... I don't have to, uh, to give a long introduction because, you know, the last video is going to have that. Basically, this is me um, just showing my wrestling DVD collection. In the first part, I showed all of my pay-per-views. Uh, there was about 20, you know, there's some good ones. And now I'm going to be showing my match comps, documentaries, etc. Uh, there's about 20 of these as well. And I'll be talking about these in a bit of detail. So, um, I guess let's just get into it but before we start. Let's just take a drink. I am brew, good for the soul. The national drink of Scotland, apparently. So let's start at the top with a classic. Nah, I'm joking. Uh, Batista, I Walk Alone. Three disc set. Pretty awesome set. The artwork inside's really good. Three discs. I'll take out the match slip so I can check. So the documentary is not bad, but again, it's nothing too great. I mean, I'm never. You're not gonna like. It's not like Rise and Fall of ECW. It's not a great documentary. It's a decent one. And the matches aren't really, you know, incredible either. There's some decent ones that are like great, but um. It's Batista doc. It's a Batista DVD. I bought it more for the matches than the doc because I've kind of seen the doc already, and the matches to me were decent. There's some good ones. There's some rubbish ones. Uh, I think the best ones are probably uh, Batista and Triple H Vengeance in the Hell in a Cell match. Uh, Batista and Undertaker WrestleMania 23. And Batiste and Undertaker at Cyber Sunday for the world title. So yeah, Batista, I walk alone. In the end, it's a pretty good set. Well, no, it's it's a good set. Buy it if you're a Batista fan, but if you're a WWE fan, you don't need this set. But it does have some interesting matches, an interesting documentary, which talks it looks a little bit behind Batista, and I kind of like that. And you get interviews with his wife and his mom and stuff, which is cool. Well, his ex-wife. And his daughter. Uh, so yeah, Batista, I walk alone. It's pretty cool. Next we move on to the Best of Raw 2010. She's got a cool cover. I like it. Uh, the artwork inside is cool. 2010 was the year of the Nexus. The year that Shawn Michaels retired. Uh, the year of John Cena as the WWE Champion. The year where, uh, where Miz cashed in money in the bank and held the United States and the Unified Tag Team titles. Uh, three discs, there's no insert. So, there's no, not even a space for an insert. So, basically, I just had to guess the matches. I watched it all in like a day, I remember. I've only ever watched it once. I've watched the Batista thing fully like once. Uh, this one... You know, the big moments are, of course, Bret the Hitman Hart's return, uh, the shocking invasion of the Nexus, which is cool, I like the Nexus, Shawn Michaels' is, uh, farewell, the rise of Randy Orton, I'm just reading what it says in the back, the Miz and his awesome WWE title run, which, by the way, that's only, like, a month in this, because it goes over all 12 months, and some good matches, I mean, DX against, there's a good DX against, uh, Jericho match, I think, one of the standouts is an Edge versus Christian match, um, Randy Orton versus Evan Bourne, I think. Evan Bourne's on here a lot, which I liked. Uh, but there's some stinkers as well. There's a, a few Divas title matches here and there, uh, which is cool to see, but none of them too great. Eve Torres actually wins the Divas title on this DVD, who I can't remember who against. Um, Alicia Fox? Alicia Fox, I think. Yeah, but, um, yeah, best of Raw 2010. It's not a bad set, but, uh, again, it's not the best thing you're ever gonna watch. Now I move on to one of my favourite docs, like, or well not docs, one of my favourite things that come out every year. It's the best pay-per-view matches of the year, and this is 2011. Great cover with Punk with a WWE title. you got Edge there with Dolph Ziggler in a uh, educator. You've got uh, Del Rio on the ladder, and that's him winning Money in the Bank. And you've got Triple H and Undertaker there. So um, this is a great doc like match compilation I really do think it is the sleeves great and um, this one does come with an insert and I love this bit here with all the pay-per-views that's awesome well actually again best pay-per-view matches only cover from January to August 
I mean, January to October. So it doesn't do Survivor Series or TLC, which is a bit of a shame, especially in 2011, because Survivor Series had a great WWE title match between CM Punk and Alberto Del Rio, and it had that once-in-a-lifetime tag match where Awesome Truth took on Rock and Cena. And TLC had some good matches. Um, what was the best match? Danny Bryan winning the belt was awesome. That could have been put on here, but no. Uh, here's the insert. This is the same, you see, as the best pay best of Raw. It's got this bit where you don't have to put the insert. The insert just sits inside. So um, let me go over the discs and stuff. Great. But um, good matches on here. I mean, the best ones to me. Edge and Dolph Ziggler for the World Title at Royal Rumble was fantastic. Uh... Undertaker and Triple H and Olds Bard was from 27 is great, obviously. Uh, the ladder match for the vacant world title, Christian Del Rio is great. And um, Cena and Punk for the WWE title, Money in the Bank, is amazing. It's the best match of the past five years, in my opinion. And on the last disc, last disc is pretty weak. Probably Jericho, no, Orton and Christian and Olds Bard for the world title. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty good set. I like it. Put it away. I've got one more best pay per view match set to show you. This sleeve is so tight, it's actually really hard to get on. There you go. So, best pay per view match is 2011. I love the cover. Seriously, it's awesome. So, we move on to the next best pay per view matches, which I've showed before. It's best pay per view matches of 2014. Did a full on review of it, so I don't need to mention much. I like the cover. Um, I'll just go over a few of the cool matches. Um, you've got the best matches: Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan at Royal Rumble, uh, the Triple H versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30, the Shield versus the Wyatt Family, Evolution versus the Shield, Extreme Rules. Uh, oh, uh, the Usos versus. Luke Harper and Eric Rowe for the tag tiles of Battleground and two out of three falls match is amazing. Uh, and then the last disc. Orton and Lesnar. No, uh, Lesnar and Cena at Night of Champions is probably the best pick there. So um, I don't have to go over this one. I did a full review of it. You can check that out on my channel if you want. Uh, awesome. <laughs> it's a pretty great match comp set. I love it. I think that there's quality matches and all three of these guys here are in great matches. And all those guys up there. So definitely check this one out. Probably one of the best DVDs of 2014. After that we move on to one of the best match comps. But the documentary is pretty weak. The documentary is like a 5 out of 10. But it is a full on interview with the guy. The guy's just not that charismatic. But uh, the matches are great. And it's Brock Lesnar. This is the collector's edition. Got this for like 12 quid. Three disc edition. So the original Here Comes the Pain just comes with uh, one disc. Which is just matches, just matches. This one comes with some insane stuff. It comes with uh, this one comes, of course, with the documentary, which is, uh, but it comes with his return against John Cena, which I thought was really cool to add that. You don't get the match, which is slightly annoying, but you get some classic Brock Lesnar matches, which include. Brock Lesnar's debut in OVW against the one of his debut, one of his matches in OVW against Leviathan. You get uh, his pay-per-view debut against Jeff Hardy. King of the Ring final, Rob Van Dam. Uh, the, the standout matches to me on here are like... Uh, Rock versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam for the WWE title. Uh, you know, Un Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar in the Hell in a Cell match at No Mercy. The best Hell in a Cell of all time. I'm going to stick to that. Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 19. Mm. And the Iron Man match, I would say the Iron Man match uh, is probably the second best Iron Man match against Kurt Angle on SmackDown, probably of all time. Probably the second best Iron Man match against Kurt Angle, first obviously being Bret and Sean. So um, this is a fantastic match comp set, but when you buy it, just buy it for the matches and not the documentary, because the documentary is not great. But you do get some Paul Heyman insight there, and that's great. But when Lesnar talks, it's just, he's on charismatic. But he is one of my favourites of all time and for his matches. Speaking of uh, favourites of all time, I watched this one last night again to, like, remind myself how good he is. Hard Knocks, 
the Chris Benoit story. This, like, isn't being sold anymore on, like, anywhere. So, I'm so happy I've got it. It's two discs, so it's when we're only doing two discs instead of three discs. And it's a sweet set, and the matches are just phenomenal. The documentary's good. It's better than the Lesnar one, but it's not quite as good as, say, uh, again, like, Rise and Fall is. Uh, it's probably better than the Batista one as well. Uh, yeah, it's better than the Batista one and the Lesnar one. But it's Chris Benoit, and there's some true emotion there, especially when he talks about stuff like Owen Hart, stuff like that. That's so emotional, and he, he gets emotional, and I, I like Chris Benoit for that. Um, forgetting, obviously, what he did, apparently. Uh, so the matches are why you really buy the set, though, and they are incredible. This is how awesome it is. You actually have an advert inside for Here Comes the Pain, which is my second favourite wrestling game behind WF No Mercy. The matches, basically two of my favourite matches of all time are on this DVD. And they are Brock for, uh, sorry, Chris Benoit versus Kurt Angle at um, Royal Rumble for the WWE title. And Chris Benoit, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 20 for the world title, which is my favourite match of all time. I watched that again last night and it's so great. Uh, there's still there's some other great matches on there though. Uh, Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit in a steel cage match. William Regal and Chris Benoit at uh, the Brian Pillman Tribute Show, which is nice. Chris Benoit versus Sid Vicious for the World Heavyweight title in WCW. People don't actually remember. Chris Benoit is actually a two-time world champ. He won the WCW title when he just before he left off Sid Vicious, uh, which I don't really count it because he, he kind of left. But um, that's awesome. And the Owen Hart Tribute Show match, Chris Benoit versus Brett, is an incredible match. Uh, this is an insane match compilation. I love it. Chris Benoit, my favourite wrestler of all time. I needed it. I needed it. Uh, and another DVD I watched last night, which has a incredible documentary uh, about the guy, the man, the legend, Chris Jericho. Uh, this is Breaking the Code Behind the Walls of Chris Jericho. Great documentary about Chris. Uh, I love that. It's the Armageddon Awake cover. Uh, I mean, Chris Jericho is so charismatic. He could car he could talk for hours, and I could just listen. Um, so you do watch this for the documentary because it's so entertaining. It talks about Chris's band and uh, you know his journalism skills and just everything great. Chris Jericho has so many skills. He was a comedian at one point. He's of course in the rock band Fozzy, who I like. Uh, he was a journalist. He has so many skills, and of course he's one of the best wrestlers ever. So documentary is entertaining for that. And, of course, two discs of matches. And there is, actually, I need to mention, on disc one, in the special features, there is basically the best post-Raw segment I've ever seen between Jericho and Austin. It's insane. Check it out. You can probably find it on YouTube. But get the document, get the whole thing, because the documentary's great. But um, the matches are great as well. I mean, you've got Rock at No Mercy for the World Heavyweight title, where I think he won his first world title. Uh, that Raw match with, uh, with Triple H, where he won his first WWF title, um, the ladder match with Shawn Michaels at No Mercy Away is insane. It's one of my favourite ladder matches of all time. Uh, let me see what else is actually on there. Uh, you've got Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 19, one of the best matches of all time. Uh, Chris Jericho versus Rey Mysterio for the IC title in a no holds barred match at Extreme Rules 09. Great match, love it. Probably the second best in their little three match uh, rivalry. Four match rivalry, and Jericho versus Edge at WrestleMania 26 for the world title. So you got some great stuff. Uh, I love Chris Jericho. He is one of my favorites of all time. Top 20, top 20. Uh, for being, it, uh, there's a lot of Canadians in my top 20. I've like realized, and Jericho to me is one of the probably top 10 best Canadian wrestlers of all time. So um, yeah, he's, he's no Benoit, but on the mic he is, but in the ring now. But, uh, yeah, Chris Jericho, Breaking the Code Behind the Walls of Chris Jericho. It's a stupid name, but oh well. And now we move on to probably the best documentary I own, and that's CM Punk Best in the World. The cover's great. I love the comic book style because it reflects CM Punk's life and actually what he's doing now, of course, is writing uh, Female 4, which is cool. Uh, three discs. Everything about Best in the World, CM Punk Best in the World, is just awesome. Uh, the documentary is insane. It talks about... His OVW days, his Ring of Honor days, his ID, um, IWA days, uh, his, um, oh, what was his original promotion called that he made? 
can't remember. Lunatic Wrestling Federation. Was it LWA? Oh, no, LWF. The Lunatic Wrestling Federation, yeah. Uh, and it's awesome. And there's some great stuff with Paul Heyman. And he talks about the December to Dismember incident where Heyman was fired. And then the matches. Uh, disc 3, there isn't a match below three and a half stars. That's insane for a documentary. Uh, you've got the matches with... Uh, you've got the TLC with Jeff Hardy at SummerSlam, which is great. Uh, you've got the uh, Money in the Bank match with John Cena. Best match of the past five years, I've already said that. Um, you've got uh, a WWE title match with Chris Jericho at WrestleMania 28, which is great. And then you've got the Over the Limit WWE title match with Daniel Bryan, which is just pure wrestling genius. It's a classic. One of the best matches of 2012. It might actually be, I think. Maybe I, it might be my best match of 2012. But um, this is an amazing set. It was really one of the ones that started my WWE collection, to be honest. So um, CM Punk, best in the world. It is literally one of the best documentaries you'll find. One of the best just wrestling DVDs you'll find. We move on to uh, one of my second favourite wrestler of all time. Viva La Radza, the Eddie Guerrero, the legacy of Eddie Guerrero. And Eddie Guerrero was just so amazing. I watched this in like one full night and I just kept watching, kept watching because he doesn't have bad matches, Eddie Guerrero. And, um, well, apart from maybe a few. Uh, this is so good. The design of it's great. It's a great homage to one of the greatest wrestlers the business has ever seen. And the match quality, the best one to me is the one with Lesnar at No Way Out. That match is so incredible. And the pop from the crowd when Eddie wins the belt is insane. Uh, I love it every time. It's one of my favourite matches of all time. But there's still some other great ones with Dean Malenko. Uh, two called Scorpio. There's a little like hidden gem there that I really liked. Uh, JBL, Judgment Day. Jesus, Eddie takes one of the hardest chair shots I've ever seen. Steel Cage matches. He has two great ones. One with Eddie Guerrero. Uh, one with Eddie Guerrero. One with JBL. And one with Rey Mysterio. Uh, he has a good No Mercy match with... Undertaker, and you actually have his last ever televised match with Mr. Kennedy, where he gets hit with a chair on here, so it's insane. And you get inside stories from all of his friends about him. Ah, it's great. I love it. It makes me cry every time, but seriously, it's an amazing set. And if you love Eddie Guerrero like I do, then you'll buy it. I haven't got um, Cheating Death, though. Cheating Death, Steel and Life, which you should get because the documentary. This doesn't have a full-on documentary. It just has snippets between the matches, which are kind of spread out between the three discs, which was fine. But um, I would have preferred a full-on documentary, but that's what Cheating Death, Steel and Life has anyway. So There aren't enough Rey Mysterio matches on there. It's my only complaint. There aren't enough Rey Mysterio matches. Uh, we move on to a wrestling DVD... That isn't produced by WWE, but it's one of the best documentaries you'll find. And it's a companion piece, really, to the rise and fall of ECW. And it's forever hardcore. This is awesome. This is a really good documentary. Because what f rise and fall of ECW did is it looked at those like really controversial moments. Like mass transit and the Danbury fall. And just sort of glosses over them. This goes into it fully. This is like, New Jack is basically just like, yeah, I nearly killed the kid. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. That is awesome to see that, not that New Jack nearly killed someone, but um, they, they went so in-depth on all these things. Stuff like Shane Douglas throwing the NWA title to the ground. Uh, and it's insane. And like, the ECW locker room, they all hated each other from what I got from this. Uh... Seriously, though, it's an amazing documentary. It is so good. And you've got, as it says in the front, Terry Funk, Raven, Shane Douglas, Sandman, Sabu, Joey Styles. The event where, um, well, not the event, the time when uh, Paul Heyman fired Sabu live on ECW and Sabu rants about that. They all rant about Paul Heyman not, you know, giving them dead checks, stuff like that. And that this is a great documentary. I love it. Is it better than Rise and Fall? Probably not, but it's still great. And because it goes into that little depth of, like, the mass, trans the mass transit bit is amazing. Because it's like, oh, my God. And that's something I've been so interested in. As a re someone who loves wrestling, if I could be, like, a wrestling journalist and look at, like, con controversial moments in wrestling like mass transit, which, if, if you don't know, I'll go over it quickly. Mass transit was when a match was scheduled between the Eliminators, which was New Jack and... Partner. Was it Kronos? 
Uh, we're scheduled to go against Devon and a partner. The partner didn't turn up. A guy called Mass Transit filled in. Mass Transit got bladed, and bladed means he got cut open. And he got the hell kicked out of him. And basically, he filed a complaint against ECW. But ECW were like, actually, the kid was was like 17, well, not 21. So it's a whole thing. Check it out if you're interested. But if you're not, then I just wasted like a minute of my time. But it's cool. We move on from a great documentary to just a great match comp. The documentary on this set here, Heart and Soul, the Heart Family Anthology. The documentary is weak. I don't like it's. It's not too great. Mm. But the match quality is insane. Uh, the best match on the set to me is easily, easily, SummerSlam, nineteen ninety two, Wembley Arena in my own country. Bret the Hitman Hart takes on British Bulldog for the Intercontinental title. One of the best matches of all time. Check it out if you haven't. That is a five star classic. That is a one of the best matches of all time. It's insane how good that match is. My favourite Bret Hart match, probably. Um, you got some other good matches. WWE Championship. Oh no, you've got the European title match between Owen Hart and British Bulldog on Raw, which is like one of the best Raw matches ever. Um, and then you've got probably one of the more underrated matches that I really like, the Steel Cage match between Owen Hart and Bret Hart. You don't have the WrestleMania 10 match, which is a bit weird, but it's fine because... I think the IC tire match between Bulldog and Hart is actually better. Like, saying a lot, but insane match comp. And uh, I'll show you the inside because it looks awesome. There's all the pictures of the family. I love the design of this set. It's awesome. And you actually get a Hart Dynasty match, which is nice to see. Because Hart Dynasty were the future, and then they got dropped. But we still have Natalia and Tyson Kidd at the moment, so yay. Not Harry Smith, though, got fired. Moving on to, uh, I, I'm a fan of the um, match comps where they're actually about matches, and one of my favourite gimmick matches besides TLC is the Elimination Chamber, and I've got I Am Will, which is a, uh, a compilation of all the Elimination Chambers up to 2010. Uh, some of the standouts for me, I'll show you the set, the colour, I hate the colour, but um, some of the standouts for me, I love the art, you've got Edge there. You got Orton, Ray, Ray Ray, and Triple H. Triple H is the king of the Elimination Chamber with John Cena. Uh, I don't like the art for all of this set, really, if I'm honest. I hate the art for this set. Um, I don't know, I just don't like it. It's not very good. Except for that bit there. Uh, the matches. Whoops, one of the discs fell out. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, the match quality in this. Okay. Best one to me. Uh, there's a limit. There's Survivor Series 2002, the first one, which is great. You've got the New Year's Revolution 05 one, which is great. No 06, which is great. Um, oh, what other ones? 2009 Elimination. No, No Way Out for the WWE title with Jeff Hardy, Triple H, Edge, Vladimir Kozlov, Big Show, and Undertaker is great. And I'd probably say the other one I really liked was. The World Title won 2010 Elimination Chamber World Title with R Truth, John Morrison, CM Punk, Chris Jericho, Rey Mysterio, and Undertaker. It's hard remembering all the participants. Even though there is a there's a slip inside. I have a slip because I needed it. Moving on to what I'd say is the best match comp I own. The ladder match. There isn't a bad match. Like that's all I need to say. There isn't a bad match. I love the cover. Uh, I love the, the set. The set is just so good. Uh, oh, God. And I didn't get an insert with it, so I actually have to draw one up myself. Uh, my favourite matches are TLC matches. My favourite gimmick match of all time. Let me just go over some of the matches this set has. It has every TLC match, I think, up to that point. So, like, 2007. Uh, it features some Chris Benoit matches. Ooh, like, yay. It's great. I mean, the best ladder match of all time, apart from Razor HBK, is probably Michael, uh, Benoit and Jericho at Raw Rumble 01, so, I mean, yeah. That's that's insane ladder match. Uh, my favourite ladder match is on here. Uh, Edge and Christian versus the Hardys at No Mercy 99's classic. You know, you're never going to be it, I don't think. It's what really defined a ladder match in WWE. Rock and Triple H, 98, SummerSlam is one of my favourites. Uh, 
obviously Benoit and Jericho have mentioned. WrestleMania 17. Uh, SummerSlam, firstly, the first TLC at SummerSlam zero, uh, 2000. Dudley's Hardy's Edge and Christian's great. WrestleMania 17, that same match is even better. And I would say the matches, there's two more TLC. There's one they had in SmackDown, which was Edge and Christian versus the Dudleys versus the Hardy Boys versus Jericho and Benoit, which is an insane TLC match. Probably not as good as 17, but still very good. And I'd say my favourite TLC match, which might surprise people, is actually... One of the new, well, the 2002 Raw one, which was Kane against Rob Van Dam and Jeff Hardy, against Spike Dudley and Bubba Ray, against Jericho and Christian. I think that's an amazing match. Awesome. Probably my favourite Raw match of all time. Uh, what else? Eddie Guerrero and RVD is a pretty great one. And some of the newer ones on the set, the Money in the Bank at WrestleMania 21 is great. Uh, Ray and Eddie's good. I mean, really good, but the story's a bit stupid. Uh, Edge and Ric Flair is a fantastic TLC match. Unforgiven, of course, Edge and John Cena is great. And, ah, oh, Paul London, Armageddon 06, a four-tag team ladder match. Paul London and Brian Kendrick against Eminem, against the Hardy Boys, against William Regal and Dave Taylor. That is an insane ladder match. I love that ladder match to bits. Uh, I think it's awesome. Like, really awesome. So uh, check that one out, that's awesome. Like, Armageddon 06 was a great pay view, probably because of that ladder match, to be honest. So, um, yeah, the ladder match. It's miles better than uh, number two as well, from what I've heard. Pardon me. Uh, I'll take a drink first before I do this one. So, um, we're getting there. We're getting to the end. I noticed that this is actually in the wrong order. How one minute we on? 27 minutes, alright. What's that, 27? 27 minutes, alright. Looks like we're going for a 30 plus video. Alright, let's move on to this one. This is The Road Warriors. Uh, the life and death of the most dominant tag team in wrestling history. Alright, let me just show you this. The Road Warriors are actually my favourite tag team of all time. I love them, they're great. Uh, the match quality on the docks, not bad. Uh, the Starcade match... Against Arn Anderson and... Is it Tully Blanchard or Barry Windham? I can't remember. It's against the Four Horsemen, but I can't remember what two members it is. But the documentary is really sad. The documentary is really awesome. Uh, it's a shame that Hawk obviously died, if you didn't know he died. Ugh, Starcade, I can't find it. There's a scaffold match in there where Jim Cornette, like, pops his, his, his leg. It's pretty funny. Ugh... I'm not seeing this Starcade match. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's Arn Anderson and who was the member of the Four Horsemen he was tag champs with? Was it Tully Blanchard or was it Barry Windham? I can't remember. Well, anyway, uh, it's great. I love that. It's one of my favorite tag matches of all time. So, yeah, life and death. The Life and Death, the most dominant tag team in wrestling history. My favourite tag team of all time. I really needed this. Uh... Alright, we're getting to the conclusion. We've got like six left. Let's put them... Which we start off with... Uh, I'm a big Rey Mysterio fan, if nobody knew. He was my favourite as a kid, apart from Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. So I picked up this one. I got this one for my birthday. Rey Mysterio, uh, the biggest little man. This is better than the second one to me, and it's better than 619, probably. Uh, first of all, I love the design. It's so good. Like, oh, it's so good. Rey Mysterio winning the world title was one of, like, one of my wrestling mark-out moments in history. Because I was like, oh my god, I'm so happy. Uh, match quality in this. Rey Mysterio, I don't think, has bad matches. Like, he's one of those really underrated workers that I think gets looked over too much. Um, so, we've got some great matches. There's a really good, I think, two out of three falls match with Psychosis on here. Or is it on the other one? Well, anyway, uh, my favourite match probably is the Triple Threat at WrestleMania 22 with Kurt Angle and Randy Orton because he won the world title. But, um, it's a great match comp. I don't think Rey Mysterio has bad matches, as I've already said. So, check it out. If you're a Ray Ray fan, then it's probably the best of the three. 
for match quality, but um, I mean it's great. I love it. I love Ray Ray. He's awesome. It's a shame that he's not in the company anymore. So Ray Mysterio, the biggest little man. And this one, the next one, is the next documentary they made, which actually features not a documentary, but again snippets bits between where Matt Stryker is interviewing Ray Mysterio. And this to me was Matt Stryker's like shining moment. His, his interviewing is so perfect. Like he knows what he's doing. It looks like he's enjoying himself and Ray Ray's enjoying himself. So here it is, Ray Mysterio, the biggest little the life of a masked man, sorry. And this was 2011, so this was like some newer stuff. And this actually has his second world title victory, which he won at Fatal 4-Way 2010. I think the match is on here. I think it is. Yeah, it better be. Which is a pretty decent match. There's no insert again, which is weird. But um, I do know the match is on here. The match is on here. And this was like £5, so I'm just really happy to pick this up. Other matches, the two out of three falls match with Psychosis is on here, I think. And that's freaking amazing. That's such a good match. They go out in the parking lot and he gets powerbombed and oh, it's so good. It's such a good match. So yeah, biggest little match. I can't mention the matches because I can't remember a lot of them. But I know that that Psychosis match is on there. Getting to the end, we have four left. Christ. Uh, and the first one is Randy Orton Evolution of a Predator. I love the art on the front, it's awesome. And Randy Orton is just. Randy Orton! <sighs> Dude, it... I always change Randy Orton, I'm like, I like him, I don't like him, I like him, I don't like him. But I rather do like him, I think he's really good. Uh, yeah, we've got a slip, please tell me we have an insert. Yeah, we've got an insert. And a uh, promotion for some WWE movies. The best one there is probably Legendary. And that's not saying much. Nah, uh, look like Buzz. Shut up, Ross. Alright. So, uh, the documentary to me is good, but the issue with it is that half of it's in kayfabe and half of it's out of kayfabe. So, like, you'll see him preparing for WrestleMania and getting, like, oh, CM Punk, I'm gonna get him. And you'll see part of it was, like, his, with his daughter and his wife, who's not his wife anymore. Uh, which kind of makes me sad, but watching it back, I'm like, oh, it really makes me sad. But, um... Again, it's Randy Orton, so the matches are probably what you're going for. Uh, the best Randy Orton matches on here to me. Uh, Shawn Michaels at Unforgiven, 2003, is a pretty good match. Uh, the WrestleMania 20 handicap match is really good. The, oh god, the freaking No Holds Barred match for the IC title at Backlash 2004 is the best Randy Orton match of all time. It is insane. It's one of my favourite backlash matches. One of my favourite matches, probably. Uh, I love it. The match is so awesome. And the RK, the thing that's been played forever, the RK, like, the RKO where he lands on the tacks is insane. Uh, Randy Orton gets, like, the hell being out of him in that match. It's awesome. Uh, other great matches on here that stand out. The I Quit match with John Cena... Uh, the match with CM Punk and the world title match with Christian are pretty good. Uh, that's on SmackDown, so that's when Christian lost the belt. It's a pretty good set overall. I do like this set. Uh, I watched it a few times, I enjoyed the documentary, I just wish it wasn't half in kayfabe. There's some interesting stuff about Randy Orton there you might not have known, like he was a druggie, and he was dishonorably discharged from the Marines, stuff like that, which makes you hate him. But as a kid, like, everyone in the locker room, like, when Randy Orton was younger, even Triple H was like, he was, he was, we hated him. Well, not like we hated him, we're just like, he was arrogant and cocky, but you kind of needed to be that to really get over, so, yeah, I'm a bit mixed. We move on to this year's, well, the crowning documentary of the past two years to me, The Destruction of the Shield, the best faction of the past ten years, by a mile, I think. Uh, this is a great documentary. The great match comp. Uh, seriously. I would wish the documentary was split up more and individualised on each guy. And I feel like in a few years' time, we're going to get a Seth Rollins... Whoops. We're going to get a Seth Rollins documentary. We're going to get a Roman Reigns documentary. And we're going to get a Dean Ambrose documentary. Uh, the matches on here that are best to me... Uh, Shield against the Wyatts. Shield against Evolution. Ambrose and Rollins in a Lumberjack match. Uh, I have a lot of these matches on other DVDs, which is a bit of a shame. Um, the documentary is good, though. It goes over enough stuff to be entertaining. Uh, and, you know, looks at, you know, the friendships the guys had. 
Uh, other good matches on the documentary. I mean, on the thing. Uh, some good FCW matches. Uh, with one where actually it's Liaki, which was Roman Reigns' persona, against Dean Ambrose against Seth Rollins, and that to me is going to main event a pay view one day. So all power to him. Uh, the NXT title match between um, Seth Rollins and Jinder Mahal is like vastly underrated. That is a fantastic singles match. Uh, Jinder Mahal's best match ever. And one of Seth Rollins' best singles matches, I think. Um, all the good matches that stick out. The TLC. Oh, how could I forget that? The TLC match at TLC 2012 with the Shield against Team Hell No and Daniel Bryan. Team Hell No and Ryback is awesome. Probably my favourite Shield match ever, so definitely check that out. This is a great doc. Everything about this is great. Definitely check out The Shield. The Destruction of The Shield. Because I, I knew they were going to make this eventually, and I was super hyped when they did. It was awesome. Alright, we're down to the last two. And as I've already mentioned, I don't have Heartbreak and Triumph because a friend's borrowing it. But what I do have, and when you talk about match quality, let me just list off some matches for you. Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10. Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12 between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. No odds barred against Diesel, Shawn Michaels. WWE Championship vs. Mankind, Shawn Michaels. Hell in a Cell vs. Undertaker, Shawn Michaels. Shawn, Shawn's comeback match against Triple H at SummerSlam 2002. They are some of the best matches ever contested, and they are all on these two discs. There's no dock here, and this is only about six hours long, but the match quality is just absolutely off the charts. I mean, that unsanctioned match is absolutely amazing. Ugh. Buy it. Buy this set. They're not highlights, the forward match. The Iron Man match is classic. The ladder match is classic. The Hell in a Cell is classic. Buy it. Buy it. The Diesel match is actually insane as well. It's really good. Uh, and the last documentary, again, isn't a WWE produced one, but it's about WWE. And it's Hitman Heart Wrestling with Shadows. One of the best documentaries because, of course, it was filmed while the events were going on. And how coincidental is that that something actually happened? This is about the infamous Montreal screw job, and it's insane. And Brett pulls no punches, literally, when he actually punches Vince McMahon in the face. Uh, it's great. It's great. And I'm pretty tired. So that's it. That is all of my Dodery DVDs. Uh, about 14 total. So um, thanks for watching. I know this has been an insanely long video. Oh, jeez, it has. But thanks for persevering through. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe for more. This has been Revolver Ross a lot with my video game. Video game? WWE, well, wrestling DVD collection. Thanks for watching, guys.